applying a few simple rules of physics, we can find out just what a break is. We can also establish units of measure, which will tell us what work a break must do. To secure power or energy to propel an airplane, fuel is burned in a heat engine. The burning fuel creates heat energy, which is converted into motion by the moving parts of the engine and the propeller. It is a basic law of physics that energy is never lost, but is changed from one form to another. The heat energy of the motor has been changed into motion energy of the airplane. Since we cannot lose this energy, we must change it into some other form to stop the airplane. This is done by using another heat engine called a brake. The motion energy of the airplane is changed into heat energy in the brake. The amount of energy necessary to stop the airplane can be calculated easily. Energy is commonly measured in terms of foot-pounds. If a one-pound weight is lifted one foot, the energy required to do the lifting is said to equal one foot-pound. If that foot-pound of energy is used to move an object horizontally, the object is said to take on or absorb that one foot-pound of energy. If friction is disregarded, it will take the same amount of energy exerted in the opposite direction to stop the object. Since the object here absorbed one foot-pound of energy, it will take one foot-pound of energy expended in the opposite direction to bring the object to rest. In the same way, if an airplane has a given amount of energy of motion, disregarding the rolling resistance of tires and wheels, it is necessary to expend an equal amount of energy in the opposite direction to stop that airplane. As an example, suppose an airplane weighs 36,000 pounds and lands at 90 miles per hour. Calculations show that a bomber of this weight, landing at this speed, contains an energy of about 10 million foot-pounds. To stop that airplane, we must change that 10 million foot-pounds of motion energy into some other form. Practically all of it must be changed into heat energy through the brakes. Remember, this motion energy was derived from a heat engine and will be expended from a heat engine or brake. The heat represented by 10 million foot-pounds is enormous. If the heat energy required for stopping our airplane just once were used for warming homes, there would be sufficient heat to bring the air in two six-room houses from freezing to normal temperature. And to make conditions even more severe, this enormous amount of heat is expended in a very short time. To give you a better idea of the severity of operations, we will stop this airplane at the standard rate from the moment the wheels touch the ground until the airplane stops will be 13 seconds. That was exactly 13 seconds. In that 13-second performance may be measured the efficiency of the maintenance crew which service those brakes. It is an important job demanding conscientious workmanship and an understanding of brake mechanisms and brake systems. Let us see just how brakes are operated. Hydraulic braking systems are one of two types. Integral or power type systems obtain their working pressures from the airplane's main hydraulic system. This type is used for heavier airplanes. The independent or manual system obtains its working pressures from master cylinders. 
Both systems operate at about the same pressures. Depressing the foot pedal pulls the cylinder piston down. This forces fluid through a tube to the actuating cylinder at the wheel. The amount of pressure which can be exerted on the foot pedal determines the amount of pressure built up in the master cylinder. The top half of the master cylinder contains the hydraulic fluid and the piston which moves the fluid from the cylinder through a tube to the actuating cylinder at the wheel. When the pedal is depressed, the piston moves down and forces fluid out the lower port to the actuating cylinder. A rubber or composition cup under the piston head provides a seal which prevents the fluid from leaking back past the piston into the reservoir. The cup is held against the piston head by a compression spring. The spring also returns the piston to neutral position when foot pressure is removed from the pedal. The top of the piston pull rod acts as a compensating valve to allow for expansion of the fluid at high temperatures. In neutral position, the valve is open so that when the fluid expands under heat, it will rise from the main chamber passing through the compensating valve into the reservoir. At low temperatures, as the fluid in the main chamber contracts, extra fluid from the reservoir flows down past the compensating valve into the main chamber. By means of the compensating valve, fluid in the main chamber is kept at a constant level, thus eliminating one cause of excessive pedal travel and spongy brake action. The line which carries the fluid from the master cylinder to the brakes is metal tubing where it is attached to solid parts of the airplane and synthetic rubber tubing where necessary to permit a flexible coupling to movable members of the airplane. The tube terminates at the wheel where it is attached to the actuating cylinder which actually applies the brake. The actuating cylinder consists simply of a cylinder enclosing a piston and a piston rod which is attached at one end to the brake shoe. A compression spring at one end of the cylinder holds a rubber or composition cup against the piston head to prevent leakage of the fluid past the piston. When the master cylinder is pulled down and the fluid moves through the connecting tube, the piston is forced outward. The brake shoe contacts the inside of the brake drum, creating sufficient friction to bring the brake drum to a stop. When foot pedal pressure is relieved, the brake shoe return spring pulls the brake shoe and piston back to neutral position. Some types of brakes employ a two-way actuating cylinder in which two pistons are used. In such types, the pistons move in opposite directions, thus serving both ends of the brake shoe into the drum at the same time. Two brake shoe return springs pull the pistons back when pedal pressure is relieved. Each wheel contains its own complete braking system and is independent of the other wheel. This permits application of one brake if necessary to assist in steering on the ground. The independent or manual hydraulic braking system is not suitable for fast, heavy airplanes because the pilot just doesn't have enough energy in his toes to operate brakes large enough to absorb 10 million foot-pounds of energy. Just as large trucks and other heavy road vehicles 
use power operated brakes so also do fast heavy airplanes use power brakes they are operated by fluid from the main hydraulic system the fluid is stored under pressure in an accumulator tank for operating other units on the airplane such as alighting gears flaps bomb bay doors and so forth pressure in the main hydraulic system may be as high as one thousand pounds per square inch but not more than about six hundred pounds per square inch is ever used in any braking system whether it be independent manual system or integral power system these pressure control valves allow the pilot to control the pressure admitted to the braking system he can vary it from nothing to the maximum of around 600 pounds per square inch in each brake. When the brake is in neutral position, fluid under pressure from the main system accumulator is kept from entering the control valve by a spring-loaded ball check. The ball check shaft is machined at the lower end to fit tightly into a seat in the top of the piston when the brake is applied. Holes leading from the seat through the piston head provide bleeder passages so that when the brake is off, excess fluid flows down through the bleeder holes out the lower port back to the reservoir tank. When the pedal is depressed, the control valve piston is moved upward. This movement brings the top of the piston in contact with the ball check push rod, seating the rod against the bleeder passages, shutting off any flow of fluid to the reservoir tank. As the piston continues to move upward, it pushes the ball check from its seat and permits fluid under pressure to flow from the accumulator tank through the control valve to the lines connected with the actuating cylinder at the wheel. All this happens in that fraction of a second required for the pilot to depress the pedal. When pedal pressure is relieved, the coil spring above the piston moves the piston back to its original position while pressure from the accumulator assists the spring above the ball check in returning the ball check to its seat, cutting off all pressure to the actuating cylinder at the wheel. Pressure continues to come from the accumulator as long as the ball check is open. When pressure on the top of the piston equals the pressure exerted by the foot pedal linkage, the ball check is forced down in its seat, pushing the piston down. This causes the piston rod to bend the bar spring lever attached to the foot pedal, even though the foot pedal has not been moved. The entire action takes place in a fraction of a second and is repeated as often as the pilot applies and releases the brake. Should the pilot desire sudden emergency application, heavy pressure on the foot pedal will bend the bar spring down to the stop, creating a shorter, stiffer lever to work the piston rod. This gives the pedal a fast buildup to high pressures and produces what is called a stone wall stop. If the pilot should continue to press on the toe pedals after the bar spring is in this position, the full pressure of the main hydraulic system could be applied to the brakes. Since brakes are designed to work at not more than 600 pounds pressure, some means of limiting incoming pressure must be provided. This is accomplished by using the parking brake latch as a pedal stop. When the pedal bar spring has been bent to its farthest position, the parking brake holding link hits against the top of the slot in the latch, preventing further movement of the pedal. Since the stop screw on the bar spring can be adjusted, maximum pressure can be limited to 600 pounds at the point of extreme pedal travel. Thus, the pilot may vary braking action by the pressure of his toes. Easy pressure gives an easy stop. Heavy pressure gives an emergency stop. But even the heaviest pressure can never give more than 600 pounds braking pressure. Some brakes operate at a much lower maximum pressure 
and require a large quantity of fluid. To operate these brakes from the airplane hydraulic system requires some device for stepping down the 600 pound pressure from the brake control valve to the 200 pounds maximum pressure desired at these low pressure brakes. The device that does this job is known as a debooster. The debooster consists simply of a cylindrical barrel which is three times as large at the bottom as it is at the top. Into the barrel is fitted a piston having an area of one square inch on the top and three square inches on the bottom. Assuming that fluid enters the debooster at the maximum 600 pound pressure, we have a pressure of 600 pounds per square inch pushing down on the piston. Because the lower piston has an area of three square inches, this 600 pound force is divided by three. And so the large piston delivers fluid from the other end of the debooster at 200 pounds per square inch. But since it is three times larger than the upper piston, it delivers three times as much fluid. Thus the conditions of greater fluid displacement at lower pressures are met. To replace fluid lost from the lower chamber, a compensating valve is placed in the top of the upper piston. It is merely a ball check with a restricting cage. A push rod extends from the lower end of the debooster housing up into the hollow upper piston. If fluid loss allows the piston to drop down too far, the ball is unseated by the push rod. This permits fluid to pass from the upper chamber to the lower chamber. When the fluid level is again correct, the piston is raised until the ball check closes. Then when the foot pedal is released and there is no longer pressure on top of the debooster piston, the fluid in the brake piston and connecting lines returns and pushes the debooster piston back to its original position. Except for emergency replacement of fluid, the debooster piston acts as a solid piston, separating the upper high pressure system from the lower low pressure system, which operates the brakes. Hydraulic brake systems, therefore, are divided into two main classes. First, the independent or manual system used in lighter aircraft. Second, the integral system of power brakes operated from the airplane's main hydraulic system. This is used on heavy aircraft. Either type may operate brakes requiring a maximum of about 600 pounds per square inch, or may operate low pressure brakes using only a maximum of about 200 pounds per square inch. But if low pressure brakes are operated from the integral system, a debooster is usually necessary to step down the 600 pound pressure to a maximum of 200. It is the size of the brake that governs whether it is power operated, not the working pressure.